the Mid-Triassic Period, a time when all the continents are formed together to create the supercontinent Pangaea. The climate is a harsh and hot world, with deserts covering most of it. It has been millions of years since the last mass extinction event that wiped out over 90% of life on Earth, a period that will be named the Great Dying. Even now, the world is still recovering, but many new species have evolved to replace those that died out. In this strange new world has come a host of strange new creatures, and one of the oddest of them all is Sharingosaurus. Four meters long, barrel chested with a thick, powerful neck and horns on top of its head, it is an intimidating sight. But this creature is actually mostly herbivorous. It is one of the few creatures at this time adapted for grazing on relatively high foliage, a strategy sauropods will later take to the extreme. They move in herds of all ages, with the adults protecting the younger members. Only the males have the dangerous looking horns on their heads. These are used primarily during the mating season to joust with rivals over the right to mate. As the herd wakes up, they begin to look for something to drink. The dry season has just started, but the local river is still full for now. As they make their way down, they see by the riverside is a pair of massive jaws belonging to Paracycloptosaurus. Though it looks similar to a salamander, it is far larger at 2 meters long. The head alone is 60 centimeters and has an incredible gape. But despite looking similar to a crocodile, he mostly feeds on fish that he ambushes on the bottom of the river, and he is no threat to the large reptiles. All it takes is a low growl from one of the herd's males to send the amphibian right back to the water, moving as fast as his short legs can carry him. The herbivores quench their thirst and begin their favorite activity, eating. While the young are mostly limited to ground plants, the adults can reach higher to access the tall ferns and ginkgos, and if any small insects come too close, it wasn't uncommon for them to be eaten as well. Through the undergrowth come more herbivores, a species of diectodonts. These are common in the Triassic period and come in many different sizes, though these are less than a meter long. Despite the size difference, they seem to ignore the larger herbivores. However, ignoring their neighbors doesn't come as easy for the Sharingosaurus. The newcomers are loud, making constant barking or grunting noises, and smell like they've been rolling in dung. All of this was tolerable, till two of the diectodonts began to push the younger Sharingosaurus. This was too far, and one of the males takes a deep breath, filling his broad neck and chest with air, before letting out a bellowing roar. The effect is instant, sending the smaller reptiles fleeing in terror, back along the path they came from. With peace restored, the herd returned to eating. Their lives were mostly simple. They occupied the niche of large, tough herbivore, and in a group, they were safe from most predators. One could almost look upon these strange creatures and think that their lives as the most peaceful in this hard world. Scurrying through the forest, however, was a completely different type of reptile. One that was lightweight, built for speed, and adapted to better suit the harsh landscapes. The dinosaurs were slowly making their presence known on Pangaea, biding their time to become the dominant species on the planet. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we will be breaking down one of the most unique creatures of the Triassic, Sharingosaurus. Sharingosaurus was a large archaeosauromorph reptile from the mid-Triassic period found in India. All fossils of this species come from a single bone bed which contained up to eight individuals. Not only did it have individuals of different ages, it also only contained Syringosaurus, indicating they were herd animals. Physically, Syringosaurus looks like a large, long-necked lizard with horns. It got up to 4 meters long and stood 1.8 meters tall. 
It probably had a sprawled out posture like most lizards, with a barrel-like chest and long, thick neck that allowed it to feed on tall plants. The leaf-shaped teeth it had are a sure sign that it was a herbivore. Then, of course, we have the horns. Not all of the specimens had horns, which most likely means that the horns were sexually dimorphic, or only one sex had horns, most likely the males, so that they could fight for dominance, locking them together and then pushing against each other to see who was stronger. Younger members also had smaller horns, indicating that they grew to full size once the animal had reached maturity. The horns themselves were likely covered in keratin, like those of ceratopsins, so were probably larger when the animal was alive. For an owl saw, it was quite large, and this allowed it to fill the niche of high browsing herbivore. Well, if you consider two meters high, that is. It's definitely an unusual looking animal, but then again, that's the Triassic period for you. Some of the creatures it lived alongside include, now please forgive me, these pronunciations are horrendous, Parasoclectosaurus, Chermenia denui, and many diectodons. The discovery of this one bone bed not only gave us a whole new species, but an entire group of different ages and genders, along with all the clues of how they lived. This is just one of the incredible species that lived at a time when giant amphibians and mammal-like reptiles lived alongside the early dinosaurs. But what do you think of Sharingosaurus? What other Triassic creatures would you like me to cover in a future episode? Until then, thank you for watching.